Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is called Distorted Cubes and it's an arpeggio. So it sounds like this. All right, I think you get the idea. If you like the patch, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So let's dive into this patch and see how it was created. So first things first, this one is a little bit more involved than usual because we are using both parts A and part B. As you can see how these both lights here are lit up and we're favoring part A a little bit, but we do have part B mixed in there. So if you go over here to this pattern of the uh, of Harmer here, so this is basically what's going to be happening here. We just have a couple chords and it's doing an arpeggio. So if you don't know how the automatic arpeggio works, go over here to this wrench icon or this gear here, and then go to the wrench here. And then this is going to be your arpeggio section. I have it going up and it's on range one. So that's kind of how we're going to be doing that without it. It's just that, right? So if we have this up, we have our arpeggio going. So that's how you do it. And that's basically how this patch was designed with this in mind, as I have here for best results, use as an ARP. So let's disable part B for now and kind of focus firstly on number one. So this is going to be a saw wave. And as, as always, I generally like to have this random knob all the way to the left, which is 100% spectral randomness. It gives a nice texture to the, uh, to the sound that we're making. And if we didn't, if we uh, alt click this, It just has something that I find really cool. So moving on over here, we're gonna have our crude low pass filter and this frequency is gonna be at 68%. And then the resonance for the low pass as well is going to be 51%. Now we're gonna be using unison order of three on blurred. Now these values here for the pan, 75% for the pitch thickness, 18%. So I drag this one substantially down. And then this face here is gonna be all the way at the top, which if you didn't know, once you go very, or not very, but all the way to the top on this phase slider here, you get a slightly different texture to it. So if I have it down here, maybe like 85. Then when I drag it to the top, It almost seems like a little secret feature in there. So if you ever want to have a little cool thing in there, just bring that slider all the way to the top and you'll definitely notice a little bit different texture that uh, the Harmer gives you there. Now we're right here in our volume envelope. So nothing too crazy. It's just a quick attack and it's going to be decaying pretty fast and there's not going to be any sustain as this is all the way to the bottom and a little bit of a release, but this is going so fast that it's generally, you're not going to really hear a release because each new note is happening really, really fast because it's an arpeggio. So now if we click this here, we can go into the freak filter one frequency with these little triangles here. We can always come back to our patches and see what we've done to it. So let's select here filter one frequency. And this is going to be the shape that's controlling this knob right here. So it kind of starts here and it cuts off really quick. That, beom, beom, that sound, that's what this is doing here. With this off. So this little shape here on the envelope is very important. It's, it's kind of weird because it's tucked away in some menus, but if you want an easier way to go to this, so let's say we are on volume and we want to find that and we don't want to look through the menu, you can always right click this knob here and go to edit articulator and it's going to bring you right back to the same view that we were at before. So yeah, so this, no, this uh, I guess note right here is brought up maybe a couple lines from here, it says about 100% and then it kind of st swiftly decays over to minus 125 and this is on tempo so it's about one beat right here. That's how long it takes for this envelope to complete. And for this one, for this patch here, the pitch is also here on two, so it's going down one octave. And that's basically the, the part A in a nutshell. So let's flip over to part B, let's disable A and enable B and see what's happening here. So hopefully you can hear that this is a square wave and we know that because that sounds like a square wave and also this mix knob is all the way to the right, pointing to this square wave shape right here. And again, random all the way to the left. And since this is a very high frequency sound, as you can see here, I doubled the pitch right here. So, uh, so bring this from one up to two and it's gonna double the octave or bring, double the pitch to so bring it up in one octave. And because of that, I didn't want to have a frequency cutoff because I wanted that top end character to kind of mix in a little bit with A. So we're kind of getting more of a balanced sound there. 
So no filter, no resonance here, anything like that. It's kind of just getting that tonality, that timbre of the of the square wave. We are using an order nine of unison on blurred. The panning is gonna be 75% and default 50% for the thickness. And then I like having the phase at full blur all the way to the top. And as you can see how these little lines here, these harmonics have these little squiggles in here, and that's happening because of the vibrato here. So this depth here is at 23 cents. And the speed's 177 milliseconds. And as always, we can click this drop down menu here and see what we've affected here. So really the only thing that we're looking at here is the volume. Now this is going to be the exact same shape as it was in A and B. And a little quick tip if you didn't know this, if you draw this shape in, in part A and you're like, I like this shape, but I wanna use it to part B, but I don't really wanna draw it the same, or maybe you just want it exactly the same. So underneath this little drop down triangle menu here at the bottom, you can click this and then you can say copy to part B and it'll copy that shape over to part B. So it saves you a little bit of time. So it's very helpful and things like that. So this is the side B and then A mixed in that. So generally, this, the A part is has a much more presence. As you can see, it's, the slider is a little bit more biased towards A, but we do hear a little bit of that top end of that B mixed in there as well. And you can always change this to taste if you want to lean a little bit more on B versus A, that's totally up to you. And that's just patch in a nutshell. So let's see what's happening here on the channel strip here. I have a little bit of EQ and this is kind of more so for the automation purposes. Cause you look at this, you're like, oh, that's kind of a strange curve. And yes it is, but this is gonna be automated here in the song. So as we drop this drop down menu here, we have two automation clips and let's bring this EQ up here. And let's see what happens when we play this here. So if you didn't notice what's happening here, this EQ is starting off kind of closed and then once the full beat comes in with the snare and then some other synths behind it, then everything opens up and it opens up the whole stage for this full sound to shine in all of its glory. And that's very easily done with just right clicking these frequency knobs and create automation clip and then editing it from there. So with that being said, that's how this patch is made. If you'd like to get this patch, it's free in the video description below. So let's play us out with distorted cubes. Leave it to me to forget the distortion for distorted cubes till the very end. We're on sign crush, the amount's all the way at the top. This second slider here is gonna be at the bottom on 100% stereo. The wet's 59, this next one right here, the distortion mix is zero, and the filter is at 13,320.49 hertz. So yeah, that's about it. And we're on burning here, just bring up a little bit of the lows and a tad bit, I think, of the highs at 1%. And that's it. See you in the next one.